You're listening to the I'm Busy Being Awesome podcast with Paula Engebretson, episode number 243. Hey everybody, welcome back, episode 243. Today we are exploring a new way to think about time and how we approach our time and how we approach our days. So as a productivity coach for ADHD and brains, it is probably no surprise that I am always thinking about time. How can we make time more visible? How can we recognize when time is passing? How can we make it feel more real and tangible? What are some new ways to structure time based on our brains and our different preferences? How can we create different levels of flexibility? I mean, long story short, I am always thinking about time. And one of the topics that I talk about often with my clients is the importance of finding their brain's preferred level of structure when it comes to time. Because as I say over and over on this podcast, no two ADHD brains are alike. So this means that there is a nuanced approach to designing the ideal level of structure and scaffolding and scheduling for each person. Just because one person loves to use the Pomodoro technique where you work 25 minutes on and then a five minute break, that doesn't mean that it works for every person. Case in point, I cannot use the Pomodoro method. It is not effective for me because it takes me almost 25 minutes to get into my work. So if I use the Pomodoro technique, I essentially spend my entire day in transition, which if you've been listening to the podcast for a minute, you know is my nightmare. (laughs) And similarly, just because some brains do really well with highly structured blocks of time every 30 or 60 minutes, it doesn't mean that all brains are going to thrive with this. So we really want to hone in and get clear on what works best for you. This is one of the reasons why I think it's so powerful to work with a coach, whether it's one-on-one or in a group, to have that guidance and have that support as you go through that process of iteration to figure out the approach that's best for your brain in this season. Because what's also true is that our seasons change. And when our seasons change, often the level of structure that we need can change as well based on the type of work we're doing, whether we have kids or not, how old those kids are, if they're in school or not, and so many other competing variables. Because again, we are all dynamic humans living dynamic lives. Now, several years ago, I came across a concept from Gretchen Rubin. You've probably heard me talk about Gretchen Rubin in the past on this podcast. I think she has a lot of really great frameworks and ways to think about human behavior and human nature generally. I will link to some of them in the show notes if you want to dive into her work at all. But back in 2021, which was a while ago now, she posted this tweet when it was still Twitter saying, instead of feeling that you've blown the day and thinking, I'll get back on track tomorrow, try thinking of each day as a set of four quarters, morning, midday, afternoon, and evening. If you blow one quarter, you get back on track for the next quarter. Fail small, not big. Okay, I feel like I need to say this again because it's it's really important, okay? So instead of feeling like you've blown the whole day thinking you'll get back on track tomorrow, try thinking about each day as a set of quarters, morning, midday, afternoon, evening. That way, if you blow a quarter, you just get back on track for the next quarter. I love this idea so much. I find it to be incredibly effective in terms of a mindset approach to our days. And I'm going to talk more about why I love this framework so much in just a minute. But first, I want to give a little more backstory and also my slight twist on her approach. And then we will dive into the benefits and how we might use this in our lives. So this four-quarter approach, it resurfaced sometime a couple of years later on TikTok, apparently. I think it was sometime around late 2022 or so. And it surfaced on TikTok. Obviously, I saw it on Instagram because as the meme goes, I watch my TikToks on Instagram like an adult. (laughs) So I saw it come up on Instagram, this TikTok sensation that grew in around 2022 sometime. And it, I think, was originally inspired by Gretchen Rubin's concept. So the four-quarter approach, as 
Gretchen Rubin mentioned, it breaks down into those four parts. So you have morning, midday, afternoon, and evening. And then if you look at the TikTok explosion that followed, people started putting times to these quarters. So the morning quarter was roughly 6 to 10. Midday went from around 10 to 2. Afternoon was 2 to 6. And then evening was 6 to 10. Okay, so the general idea is you have this four quarter approach. You think about your day in those four quarters. Again, love this idea. But for myself, I noticed that my brain wanted a little more structure. For me, those four quarters were not quite specific enough. And what's more, when I looked into it a little further, I'm like, why not? Why is it not specific enough? I realized, you know what? There's too much overlap in very different activities with those four quarters. And what I mean by that is I was doing rather different things within the same container and my brain didn't like that. It's like when you don't want your food to touch or whatever, (laughs) you want to keep them separate. My mind is like, I don't want these activities to touch in the same container. They need to be separate. Again, everybody's level of structure will be different. Your brain may not mind if they touch. Okay. So for myself, I didn't like the idea of the different types of activities kind of bleeding together into one quarter. My brain wanted a little more competitive compartmentalization. So when I started playing around with this, I realized, you know what? I could make just one simple shift that makes a huge difference. And again, I'm offering this thought process because I encourage you each to have the same kind of curious experimental approach when you're designing your days. There is not one right way to do this. So if you find you like the four quadrant approach or you like my approach, but you want a slight shift, do it. This is how it works. Okay. Think about what works best for you. So again, I needed a slightly different shift. And for myself, that shift was creating fifths instead of quarters. Okay. When I divide my waking hours into five different sections rather than four, I realized that slight shift made the breakdown of the hours align so much better with my day in the way it's traditionally structured and also how my brain typically thinks about the day and when I have meals and when I have transition points and all the different things. So for me, a fifth based approach rather than a quarterly approach was so much more supportive. So when I break my day into fifths, I use three hour increments. And I break my day into the following containers. I have early morning from 6 to 9, mid-morning from 9 to 12, afternoon from 12 to 3, late afternoon from 3 to 6, and then evening from 6 to 9. And then for me, from 9 o'clock onward, the idea is that I'm beginning my bedtime routine. I'm getting into bed by about 10, okay? But I love the idea of intentionally and actively planning within these five blocks, these five containers of time each day. So for those of you who find that your brain prefers a little bit more structure than simply looking at your task list and deciding your top three for the day, right? Some brains like a lot of flexibility and they go, I just need these top three. That's all I need to know. But for those of you who want a little more structure than that, but it's too much structure to do the tightly blocked 30 or 60 minute time blocking, this quarterly or fifth approach to mapping out your day could be a really supportive alternative with just enough structure in mind. Okay. So with that, let's talk about why I think this is such a fantastic approach, such a great middle ground between super tight structure and rigid structure or very loose, flexible structure. It seems like a rather happy medium in between. Okay. Whether you use the four quarters or the fifths approach, it doesn't really matter. The general idea, the benefits that I'm going to talk about here remain the same. So first of all, I love this quarterly or fifth approach because of how containered it is. And because it's containered, it can help us with our all or nothing thinking. It can kind of stop it in its tracks because I know many of you like me, can easily slip into all or nothing when it comes to our schedules. I think I've shared on the podcast before, when I first discovered time blocking, 2015, 2016, that time, my brain was so inflexible. I mean, my cognitive flexibility was basically non-existent. So if I scheduled my day to start at 8 and it was 8.07, I genuinely believed I blew it. 
I ruined the date. The date is over. I can't believe that I wasted so much time. It's 8.07, friends. <laughs> but this was my brain. And I can say it now and I can laugh at it, but it felt so real to me for so long. So for anybody whose brains also fall into that all or nothing thinking, you may not be as extreme as I was, uh, but that kind of, oh, the day I've just blown it, you know, I've just wasted so much. I really think the four quadrants or the fifths approach can be super useful. You know, as Gretchen Rubin mentioned in her tweet, if your first or second block, your first or second quarter doesn't go as planned, it doesn't mean the day's over. It doesn't mean it's ruined. Instead, you can start fresh at the top of the quarter or the top of the next fifth. You know, top of the quarter rolls off the tongue so much easier because it's used in so many sports. Sports are played in quarters. So if any of you can think of a more fun way to talk about the top of the fifth, uh, I guess that's kind of a baseball thing. Anyway, Paula, bring it back. <laughs> I do think that this approach, whether you're using quarters or you're using fifths, can be a really great way to help reset the all or nothing thinking because we can bring it back to the top of the block, top of the quarter, top of the fifth, whatever it is, rather than thinking, oh my gosh, I just need to start fresh the next day. No, we just start at the next block. Now, I also love this approach, reason number two, because using quarters or fifths, I think provides that beautiful balance between structure and flexibility. And after working with hundreds of ADHD brains over the years, I've found this to be the golden ticket for so many of us. We need some level of structure. Our brain needs something to lean on, right? We need some bookends. But at the same time, many of us want some flexibility in there as well, right? So what do I mean by this specifically? Well, if we think in the fifths with the three-hour blocks, you have that regular rhythm in the repetition knowing, you know what? There are five three-hour blocks to work with every day. You have five three-hour containers that you get to fill with whatever you want. You get to choose what goes in there. Some of them might be the same each day. For example, I do tend to follow the same morning routine every day, whether it's the weekday or the weekend. The hours might shift a little bit. The weekend may be 30 minutes later or so, but basically it's the same, both weekday and weekend. But my weekdays and weekends vary quite a bit with the other blocks. Okay, so you can have some relative structure and flexibility. Some things might repeat, some things might change. For example, maybe you're a consultant and you make a decision that your mid-morning block from 9 to 12 is saved for meetings with clients. And then your afternoon block from 12 to 3 is saved for lunch and your creative work. And then you split your late afternoon in half. The first half is administrative work and your shutdown routine. The second half is your commute home and transitioning back into the house. Actually, that's essentially how my late afternoon block works as well. It's administrative stuff the first half, and then the second half is my shutdown routine and my transition activities into being ready and present for my evening block at home. So again, there's a lot of flexibility here, but knowing that you have that regular rhythm of those containers that you can rely on can be really helpful. You know they're there, and they will hold whatever you put in them. And that brings me to the third thing that I really love about this quarter or fifth approach, which is that these containers, again, whether you use them as quarters or fifths, also provide these helpful mile markers or benchmarks in your day. So I know you don't need me to remind you that a lot of us ADHD brains are super time blind. Many of us have a hard time recognizing that time passes especially if we are deep in hyperfocus or we're you know super busy running from one thing to the next we tend to live in the now right we have a very short time horizon i love how dr barkley talks about how adhders live in the now or not now <laughs> right but when we use quarters or fifths we kind of shorten that time horizon we bring it much closer we know that we are working toward that next 3 hour or 4 hour benchmark I know when I sit down at nine, I'm working toward the next benchmark of noon. And I also know that the benchmark is there as a pivot point. That's when I'm going to shift into the next block. And I think this is really powerful because 
If you do go down the rabbit hole on some research or you get sucked into a project you hadn't anticipated and it takes much longer than you thought and you finally surface for air and your brain typically would go to, oh my gosh, I totally blew off my schedule. This is a disaster. What's the point in even trying to get back on track? You can then just go, oh wait, no, hold on. Where am I in these mile markers? Which block am I supposed to be in? Let me just shift into that block and get started. And then you can transition into the block knowing whatever you identified for that block is waiting there for you. Now, the fourth reason that I really like this blocking approach, this containered approach, is more specific to using the fifths approach, the three hour containers. So for myself, I love this approach for my brain when it comes to deep work and focused work. Okay, so if I am in hyper focus, if I'm in flow, when I'm working on this podcast, for example, or I'm creating new content or writing a workshop for my clients, I know that my brain is on and sharp for a good 90 minutes. And I also know that I usually need transition both in and out of that 90 minute hyper focus. So usually, 20 or 30 minutes for me to kind of really transition into the work to take that on ramp in and really get into flow. And then there's usually about 15 minutes or so to shake myself out of it and be ready to move on to the next thing. So I have a good two hours or two hours and 15 minutes worth of deep work time. And then I can use that remaining 45 minutes to an hour for administrative tasks or smaller projects that I need to check off the list. And that tends to work quite well for me. In fact, with this podcast, I sat down, I knew that I wanted to map everything out, write myself some notes within that two hour ish block. And then with whatever time I had left, I was going to sit down and record it. Similarly, I love seeing clients in three hour sections, three hour blocks when I'm working with clients feels amazing. I see my one-on-one -on -one clients for 45 minutes. I see my groups for an hour. And when I can line that up, to meet with them from nine to 12, and then I have a break for lunch, my brain is just so lit up. It feels so good. It feels so in flow. That works really well for me. So again, these are personal preferences for myself, for work and flow, and when I'm doing creative work, when I'm working with my clients, and I've played around with it enough to find what feels really supportive for my brain. So again, I encourage you to allow yourself that same gift of experimentation, of iteration. Allow yourself to play around and find what size container feels really good for you. And then the last reason why I really love the quarterly or the fifth approach is that for me, it makes prioritization so much easier. And I know many of you like me can quickly feel overwhelmed when it comes to prioritization. Knowing our priorities, this is not an easy thing for an ADHD brain. But when I look at my day and I think about my five blocks that I'm working with, I can ask myself, okay, in this first block, what matters most? In these three hours, if I only did one thing, what would it be? What is most important here? What's the key takeaway? Now, I love this approach always at all times, but I think it's especially effective for myself if I am off my routine or if there's been a shift in plan. Again, you all know my cognitive flexibility is not great. Transitions, changes in plan, it's hard for my brain to get on board. And this is a really grounding practice for me because I can check in and go, okay, but what matters most in this block? I have five of them to work with. What matters most here? What matters most here? And actually today kind of fits this bill. I had a pivot in my day. So I looked at my five blocks and I said, okay, what is the most important thing this morning from six till nine? And today I actually had two things, but they were definitely doable within that three hour block. Okay. I was getting Bruno walked and then getting myself ready for the day. And then I looked at my plan and I go, okay, how about from nine till 12? What's most important here? Again, I looked at my list. And I realized, you know what, it's mapping out this podcast and then getting it recorded if I have the space. If I don't, not a problem, but for sure it's getting the podcast mapped out. Bonus, get it recorded. From there, I looked from 12 to 3 and I went, okay, what's most important? So suddenly what kind of felt like this untethered day with competing demands quickly cleared up because I know exactly what matters most in each block. And that's where I could put my focus. All right, so to wrap things up here, 
First and foremost, the key takeaway is finding the personalized approach that works best for your brain. Just because one approach works well for one person doesn't mean it has to be the one that you use. So please allow yourself that time to experiment and make it work for your current season. And if you want support in that, if you want someone to help you iterate and play around with different approaches to really lock it in for you, let's talk. I work both one-on-one -on -one and in small groups. You can tap through the links in the show notes to learn more, okay? But that's first and foremost, allow yourself time to find the level of structure that feels best for you. Now, with that overarching concept in mind, today we looked at both Gretchen Rubin's method of applying the four quarters and my twist in thinking in fifths, okay? I love this approach for so many reasons. Today, we talked about five main benefits. First, it helps us challenge the all or nothing thinking mindset where we kind of throw out the schedule entirely if we tend to fall behind. Instead, it helps us get right back on track knowing that we can jump in at the next quarter or fifth. Number two, I love this approach because it offers awesome balance between structure and flexibility, which is something that's crucial for so many of us with ADHD brains. Having that reliable rhythm to operate within while still having space for spontaneity is really a game changer. Number three, these time blocks act as benchmarks throughout the day, right? We have these containers blocked in throughout the day and it helps us stay grounded and aware of that passing time. The fourth reason that I shared is a bit more specific to my brain, but I hope that it highlights the overarching concept. But for me, the three hour fifths approach is really supportive for my brain when it comes to deep work and focused blocks. For you, it might be the same. For you, it might be different. But figure out that amount of time for you that you need to get into flow and see how you can build that into your schedule. And then finally, I love both the quarterly and the fifth approach when it comes to helping us quickly prioritize. By focusing on the individual blocks and asking ourselves, what's the one thing that would be most helpful for this block? Or what matters most about this block today? When we pause and we ask ourselves this, it helps create so much clarity so we can hone in on what truly matters. So whether you are sticking to the classic four quarters approach, whether you are taking a cue from my playbook with the five blocks, the fifths, or you're doing something totally different, the key is to experiment and find what clicks best for you. And if you give it a try, I would love to hear about it. Head over to Instagram. You can either send me a DM or leave a comment on the post for this episode if you're listening in real time. I am at I'm Busy Being Awesome and I can't wait to hear about it. All right, my friends, that's going to do it for us this week. And if you're ready to take these concepts and apply them to your life, if you're ready to learn how to support your ADHD in a way that's best for you, I invite you to check out today's show notes and you can learn more about both my small group coaching program, We're Busy Being Awesome, and my one-on-one -on -one offerings. Also, if you want to learn my simple step-by-step -step approach to locking in a routine and making it stick, be sure to take my free course, The ADHD Routine Revamp. You can tap through the link in the show notes or head to imbusybeingawesome.com slash routine to sign up. Until next time, keep being awesome. I'll talk with you soon.